All right, so welcome to episode 10 of the Middle-Aged Metalhead. We're actually uh, 10 episodes into this. So far, so good. So considering we passed the halfway point for 2021, figured this would be a good time to list down my top 10 albums for the year so far. So click on the description for the video and you'll get links to all 10 albums and their uh, uh, band camp. And uh, leave a comment and tell me what your favorites were. And if you like what you see, uh, subscribe to the channel, leave some comments, interact, and uh, click on the bell icon to get notifications. So yeah, let's get started. So at number 10, we've got Cryptosis with Bionic Swarm. So Cryptosis uh, Bionic Swarm is actually their debut album. But if you look a little closely, you'll see that uh, Cryptosis started life as a thrash metal band in 2013 uh, called Distillator uh, from the Netherlands. And they released two solid thrash metal albums. But when the guys wanted to change their sound to a more complex technical thrash metal thing, they also decided to change their name to Cryptosis. So Bionic Mass might be their debut album, but these guys have a fair bit of experience and they know what they're doing. So, with Bionic Swarm, the riffs are quite complex, the songs are uh, almost, I would say, verging on uh, technical, progressive thrash, but it never really turns into a riff salad, and that's because the songwriting is very on point and well thought out. I guess, in terms of band comparisons, this would come pretty close to Vector, although at times it did kind of remind me of uh, Meshuggah's Contradictions Collapse as well. So that's the kind of vibe that they're going for. But the biggest strength that these Dutchmen have is uh, knowing when to stop. And they also know the power of brevity. These, this uh, album, Bionic Swarm, is basically 10 songs in about 37 minutes. And that means that uh, Cryptosis just leave me wanting more. Right, so Bionic Swarm by Cryptosis at number 10. Okay, at number 9, we've got another long-running American band. These guys formed in 2007, The Flight of Sleepner, and this year they released their latest album called Eventide. So The Flight of Sleepner have been doing their thing for a long while now. They combine uh, black metal, doom, traditional metal, and bits of American folk. And while that description sounds uh, very Agalokian, this band has a sound that's entirely their own. Eventide is probably their best album yet. There's some terrific songwriting here and uh, their palette of influences has uh, broadened even more. There's bits of uh, country that's just seamlessly incorporated into their music. There's uh, a slide guitar that comes in at the start of one of these songs that just absolutely sounds perfect like it was always meant to be. And these songs just work together to create uh, a terrific album. And Eventide uh, is a real grower. I think by the end of the year, this might be way higher up the list. So link to the Bandcamp is in the description, like I said. If you've never heard of The Flight of Sleep Net, check this out. Check Eventide out. This is some really good stuff. Number 8, and this one's a bit of a surprise for me. I, uh, Cannibal Cops, their latest album, Violence Unimagined. I haven't really enjoyed a full Cannibal Cops album in a long while. I think maybe Bloodthirst was the last. And uh, I'm not really sure what's changed with Violence Unimagined. The band sounds uh, like they've got a renewed sense of energy. And maybe it's the entry of Eric Rutan as a full-time member. And maybe I just like these songs better and the band's always been doing what they've uh, been doing. Right? It is Cannibal Corpse. It's not like they're going to evolve greatly from album to album. But yeah, there is something about Violence Unimagined that uh, just makes me keep going back to it. This is just a fun, groovy collection of death metal songs uh, written by masters of their craft, right? So number eight, Cannibal Corpse, Violence Unimagined. At number 7, we've got Suffering Hour with their second album, The Cyclic Reckoning. So Suffering Hour had a really promising debut, I think in 2017, about 3-4 years ago, called uh, In Passing Ascension. 
and uh, this one their follow-up the cyclic reckoning is even better they seem to have progressed pretty much on all levels and this is just a memorable blackened death metal album it's complex the songwriting is really layered there's just the right amount of uh, subtle melody mixed into the band's uh, blackened death metal thing and uh, it's got the kind of riffs and melodies that just are going to burrow themselves into your head and stay there really good stuff at number seven suffering are the cyclic reckoning okay number six is the new one from drawn and quartered congregation pestilence is the band's uh, i think eighth full length and this is a band that's been going on since 1994 yeah also this album is a bit of a cheat because it actually came out on the 2nd of july but fuck it this is some awesome death metal it's nasty it's really really heavy it's brutal it's abrasive it's really everything that i uh, want from death metal and uh, congregation pestilence just exists to pummel you into submission and it does a damn good job of it so number six drawn and quartered congregation pestilence number five is the latest one from jess and the ancient ones this is their third full-length album and it's called Vertigo. Now, Jess and the Ancient One started as a sort of occult, doom metal, doom rock kind of thing a few years ago when that uh, sub-sub genre was uh, really exploding all over the place. But over the last couple of albums, at least they've moved away from their uh, metal beginnings and got into a much more uh, vintage late 60s early 70s psychedelic rock sound in fact i'd say a couple of songs on this album are even uh, bordering on psych pop more than uh, rock it's backed up by some incredible musicianship um, thomas corpse the chief songwriter is in terrific form here jess the vocalist has never sounded this confident it's like she's embraced the spirit of janice joplin and she delivers a fan fantastic performance right through this album. I mean, uh, going by how often I'm spinning this, this is probably going to go up way higher by the end of the year, unless some really terrific stuff comes out in the next six months. But uh, yeah, Jess and the Ancient Ones, Vertigo for now at number five. Okay, at number four, we've got Mephitis, the American duo with their second album, Off Scourings. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, off scourings, off scorings, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, their debut album, Ember Dawn, was uh, promising, black and death metal, maybe a little uh, progy at times, a little traditional metal at times, but it also had a weird um, sense of Finnish uh, style of uh, songwriting, which was weird mainly because these guys are American. But then uh, the new album is kind of like a refinement of all of the ideas from their debut. The songs are more complex, the progressive side is, I would say, explored more fully. And uh, they've never actually sacrificed on the metal side of things, right? So the result is just a really fascinating album that almost feels like a melodic demelic at times. Again, I realize a uh, Finnish reference here, but uh, that is really what Mephitis sounds like to my ears. At number four, Mephitis with their new album of Scourings. At number three, from Serbia, we've got The Stone with Kosturnitz. Now, The Stone have been around for a long time, and Kosturnitz is the band's ninth full-length album. Now, these guys aren't really reinventing the wheel in any way. This is basically a second wave of black metal, but uh, maybe the Swedish variant. And uh, along with that, they occasionally mix in some uh, modern touches uh, very subtly and uh, maybe even some post black metal kind of uh, sounds into their songwriting. But overall, the songwriting is really, really solid here. Every single song on this album just... Uh, is really memorable whether it's the riffing the melodies and of course the absolutely stunning performance behind the drum kit by uh, honza kapak who's also played with the uh, master's hammer maniac butcher 
Avenger and uh, seems to be sort of like a East European uh, drum maestro, right? Uh, and Kosternitz, thanks to his drumming, just uh, goes that one step higher. At number three, The Stone with Kosternitz. Okay, number two, we've got Ghastly with Mercurial Passages. So third album from this Finnish death metal project and uh, Ghastly just continues to grow. The band's debut was a pretty much standard Meat and Bones Finnish death metal affair. The second album, Death Weller, was a big progression in terms of songwriting ideas. And their latest and uh, third album, Mercurial Passages, just uh, continues that growth. Mostly mid-paced with that uh, very particular Finnish death metal songwriting sensibility, but it also explores new ideas with uh, an sort of adventurous spirit that I can only call progressive. You know, imagine uh, Morbus Kron and uh, their Sweven album, but uh, with the death metal bite still intact. Ghastly still have that aggression going for them through all of their uh, musical adventures and that's what makes Mercurial Passages such an impressive album. So number two, Ghastly with Mercurial Passages. Alright and finally at number one we've got Dordi Da with their second album Har. Now Dordi Da uh, basically came uh, from Negorabangi uh, Romanian black metal band um, and uh, they released their debut album nine years ago in 2012. I have not having heard anything from them, I'd pretty much forgotten about them, had absolutely no idea a new album was going to come out this year but here it is and Har is absolutely beautiful. I mean every single element here feels like it's thought out and there's a reason for its existence. It's almost 62 minutes long, so there's a lot to take in, but there's zero fat. I mean, the nine year gap between debut and follow up has really been worth it. And uh, it's fearless, confident songwriting and another album that really needs to be experienced from start to finish. If you don't have the time to give this uh, 60 minutes of your uh, day, then don't bother. Wait till you've got some time and just listen to this from start to finish. It is worth it. So number one so far this year and uh, I'm thinking it's going to be number one at the end of the year as well because this is pretty fantastic. Uh, Dordi Der from Romania with their second and new album Har. Alright that is pretty much uh, it for me. So those were my top 10, what are yours? Let me know in the comments um, if you had a different list, if you don't agree with mine, what did I miss out on? Yeah, if you like what you see, uh, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, click on the notification uh, button and the bell icon. And yeah, stay metal, stay safe. This is the Middle-Aged Metalhead signing off for now.